Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Came out in 1986 and stars Matthew Broderick as Ferris Bueller. A rambunctious teenager determined to skip one last day of high school before his upcoming graduation. And seeing as he's already missed nine days this year, he's going to have to make this one count. So this film was written and directed by John Hughes, who was pretty much the master of teen comedy, and really comedy in general in the 1980s. His films include The Breakfast Club, Weird Science, and Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. All of those he wrote and directed, but he also wrote the likes of Home Alone and National Lampoon's Vacation as well as a bunch of other films throughout the 80s and 90s. So if you look at John Hughes' filmography, he starts out with these kind of sappy teen dramas like Sixteen Candles and The Breakfast Club, which, yes, they were comedies, but they also were coming-of-age stories. And then as you move into his later career, when he focused more as a writer, then you get more slapstick stuff like Home Alone and the later Vacation movies. But this film kind of lands right in the middle. And this was at a point when John Hughes still had a lot of nuance in his comedy. And this was just when he was starting to get comfortable in a comedic setting. And you could really tell that. This film achieves basically a perfect balance between comedy and that coming of age drama. And so I think this is probably the most balanced John Hughes film there is. And that balance is achieved through some brilliant character work. So starting off with our titular character, Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller is a really interesting character in this film because he has this kind of godlike presence, not only in how he lucks into and out of almost every situation in this movie or just eases his way through every predicament he gets into. He also seemingly has some kind of knowledge or control over the movie itself, frequently breaking the fourth wall to talk directly to the audience, almost knowing that he's in a movie. And so having this weird omniscient character as your titular character and as who you follow throughout the film, he feels less like an actual character with an actual arc and more like kind of a vessel for the story to be told through which is a really interesting way to approach comedy and definitely a very effective way to approach comedy. And one that we didn't really see after this until probably the Deadpool movies more recently. And what's so strange about this is, like I said, Ferris Bueller as a character doesn't have a true character arc in this movie. And so he's not even really the main character if you think about it. I would argue that the character of Cameron, who is played by Alan Ruck, is the true main character of this film. Cameron has by far the most definitive arc in this movie. We get to see him struggle to overcome this fear of stepping outside of his comfort zone. And we get to see this struggle develop throughout the movie. And so with him having the biggest and most profound arc of the film, you could argue that Cameron is really the main character and that Bueller is more of a vessel for the story to be told through. And it's a really interesting way of looking at this movie. And it's a really fascinating way of constructing a plot for a comedic movie, especially. On the topic of characters, this film has hands down some of the best character performances I've ever seen. There are some great character actors in this. Jeffrey Jones as Principal Rooney in what has to be his most iconic performance of all time is an absolutely unforgettable part of this movie. Mr. Rooney's secretary, who's played by Eddie McClurry, who also played like every other secretary in the 1980s, especially in Hughes films. Ferris's parents as well. Both of those actors played a bunch of different character roles in this time period and even played parents in a different movie together in Stephen King's Sleepwalkers. Oh, and also, a very young Charlie Sheen is in this movie in a very minor part, but that's another really fun part of this movie, getting to see uh, upcoming star Charlie Sheen in this really minor role before his career kind of got going. 
So the depiction of teenage life and late high school life is definitely very realistic in this film. The fact that given a day off, high school students would just go out and do random stuff all day, like go to art museums, go to baseball games, and just do a bunch of random stuff is obscenely realistic. And I really appreciated that accuracy that was in the film. And having that accuracy provides a solid base for all of the comedy in the film to feel more real and for you to get more invested in the comedy of the film. But it also helps drive home the more serious aspects of the film. And while Ferris Bueller's Day Off definitely doesn't delve quite as deep as maybe The Breakfast Club or Sixteen Candles into the more heartfelt coming of age stuff, it definitely takes some time to touch on the different deeper elements of growing up and leaving high school, especially through the character of Cameron. One thing I will say about the coming of age part of this film though is that I wish there was a little more closure given to that part of the film. Because when you get to the end of this movie, it's kind of just like it's over. And we never really get to see any of these conundrums that they're thinking about play out. And so we never really get to know what happens to our characters. And well, yes, this is just a goofy comedy movie and it's low stakes, it's carefree. That's one of the main things this movie is all about is just being a fun experience. But I wonder why then even bring up these different things if none of them will fully develop. Overall, I'm gonna give Ferris Bueller's Day Off a nine out of 10. This is basically the perfect example of how to do teen comedy right. And it's also a great coming of age story. I wish more movies could be like this, especially nowadays, especially comedy movies, could be this carefree while also being so thoughtful. Anyways, guys, that is going to wrap up the video. Thank you, as always, for watching. And if you like this, please consider showing your support by leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel for new reviews and top fives coming very soon. I've been Max. This has been Max 5 Film Review, and I'll see you in the next one.